So rather than memorizing all the asymptotes, because I think you guys would agree, trying to me there are four different functions that have asymptotes, right? And trying to remember which one is which is going to be very confusing, and sometimes you're going to mix it up. And if it's on a multiple choice, if you mix it up, that's bad, right? So rather than trying to memorize, rather than getting flashcards and going through all that, here's what I like to think about it as. Take the unit circle. Now when we graphed the first two functions, sine and cosine, we did every single point on the unit circle. Right? And the reason why I did that is for two reasons. One, I wanted you guys to see how these points on the unit circle related to the graphs on an xy axis. And then two, I also just wanted you guys to practice evaluating trigonometric functions. So therefore, you do well on the unit circle quiz, right? which came up, which was last one. However, um, now that you kind of understand that, when the, think the one thing is, like memorizing the whole unit circle, I've never been in favor. I've always been in favor. You've got to know those three points, right? And then you can use those to find the other ones. But these points, you know, you basically, you also need to know these points, which we've kind of talked about in class. And I don't think these points are very difficult for you guys to recall on short notice. You'd be like, okay, yeah, circle has a radius of one. Those are all the coordinate points, right? Remember, guys, asymptotes occur when the denominator is equal to 0, when the function is undefined. So let's just, let me just explain this, and then I'll treat, go back over to there. So let's think about our functions that have a asymptotes. For instance, let's look at tangent of some angle. Now remember, tangent for points on the unit circle, which these are, is the y-coordinate over the x-coordinate. We know none of these other points are going to have 0 in the denominator, right? It's only these four points. So I say, all right, well, what are the angles then? What are the angles here that I have? Remember, the first angle would be 0. This angle is pi halves. This angle is pi. This angle is 3 pi halves. And that angle is 2 pi. Right? So what is the first angle of tangent? Let's figure that out. The first angle, so when I say when theta, um, when theta equals 0, is tangent undefined y over x? So asymptotes. What about at pi halves? Yes. So I could say my asymptote occurs at x equals pi halves. What about at pi? Nope. What about at 3 pi halves? Yes. OK, x equals 3 pi halves. And then at 2 pi, no. Right? But then what we looked at, if you guys remember, remember when we did, if you guys remember the Desmos, I showed you that one where you go around the unit circle and then it plots the sine graph. right? And then I said, guys, we're not restricted to going around the circle once. We just practice going around the circle once to identify the initial period so we can look at what that graph looks like. But in reality, we know you can go around the circle once, you can go around that. And then so as you go around again, the next asymptote is going to be 5 pi over 2. And then you're going to get to 7 pi over 2. And you can keep on going and going. So as this goes, x equals. Um, 5 pi over 2. And guess what? It's just going to repeat for on and on and on and on and on forever, right? And you can not only that, you could also go in the negative direction. You could say the next intercept in the negative direction is negative pi halves. So rather than trying to memorize all these asymptotes, we also know that it's impossible to write them all because there's infinite many. Yes? It's when 0 is in the denominator. Tangent is the y-coordinate over the x-coordinate. At pi halves, my y-coordinate is 1, my x-coordinate is 0. 1 over 0 is undefined. Right? So then we start to look at, well, if what patterns then can we figure out? From pi halves to 3 pi halves is plus pi. From 3 pi halves to 5 pi halves is plus pi pi. And if we keep on going, we see that we, if we just keep on adding pi, we're just going to keep on getting asymptote after asymptote after asymptote after asymptote, right? So we'll, we, rather than trying to list the asymptotes, we can write an equation that represents all of the asymptotes. And so what we do is rather than just like saying this, we know that to you. And again, you can look at it th this way as well. As you get to pi halves, the distance to the next asymptote is halfway around the circle, which is pi. And then if you add pi again, and then add pi again, 
and then add pi again, or subtract pi, subtract pi, subtract pi, subtract pi. Every single time you add or subtract pi, you're going to get to an asymptote, as long as you start at an asymptote. So therefore, we say, well, where do we need to start? And again, you can start any asymptote. As long as you know what one asymptote is, start there. Typically, on a multiple choice test, they're going to provide the smallest positive as your asymptote. So we would say x is equal to pi halves. And then to get to the next one, I'm going to have to add or subtract pi. But to re represent the adding and subtracting, we're going to use n. So we'd say x equals pi halves plus pi n. And that is the equation for the asymptote for tangent. Now let's go and look into cotangent. Cotangent theta is x over y. And if we look at the asymptotes in this case, this is when it's the x-coordinate over the y-coordinate. And we see there's an asymptote at x equals 0, no, and at x equals pi. And again, if we notice this, 0 to pi, the next one is going to be at 2 pi. So the smallest positive asymptote I have is 0. And then the distance between each asymptote is, again, pi. But to go positive and negative, we're going to use pi n. So we'd say x equals 0 plus pi n. Well, we don't really need to write the 0 there. So we can just say x equals pi n. I'm not memorizing anything. I'm just looking at four coordinate points on the unit circle to understand where my asymptotes are. Yes? When we write asymptotes, do you want us to write x does not equal or x does equal? x does equal. If it's in the domain, then those are undefined values. But x equals is the correct version for that. OK. Um, now let's go and look at our other two functions, secant. Secant of theta. Secant of theta is 1 over x. So basically here, we're looking for, well, when is the x coordinate going to be 0? Nope, not there. Is the x coordinate here? So again, at pi halves, it's undefined. Defined. Oh, undefined. Oh, wow. Undefined at pi halves, undefined at 3 pi halves. That looks very similar to the tangent one, right? So to save myself some time, I'm just going to write x equals pi halves plus pi n. And then if you figured out any sort of relationship so far, you'll realize that cosecant of theta is going to be the same as cotangent. But let's just not check. Let's not believe that. Let's actually check it. Cosecant is, has asymptotes when y is 0. 1 over 0. Yep, that's at 0. No. Nope. Yep. Oh, it's 0 and pi. 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, negative pi, negative 2 pi, negative 3 pi, negative 4 pi. So we just say x is equal to negative pi n. So those are my asymptote equations, right? And it's all fine and good when we don't have any transformations left or right, right? Because if I don't have any shifting left or right, stretching or compression or shifts, then those are what my asymptotes are. And it's really easy to get them. The problem with your, the issue that comes up with us in, is th in this problem is we have a 4x. So what is that doing? That is compressing the graph, right? We saw. Like, you guys saw that. Don't you guys agree the asymptotes in that graph are, have changed? They've gotten compressed. So how do they get compressed? What are they? So all you're going to do when you have a transformation and again, this is only a transformation for inside of the function, because outside of the function, is vertical, right? That's stretch and compress or shift. But inside the function is left or right stretch or compress, right? So all you're going to do is take your transformation, which in our case is 4x, and set it equal to the asymptote equation. Let's do it like that. So our transformation is 4x. Because do you guys see, like, originally all of these are x equals x equals. We don't have x inside of our cosine function or our secant function. We have 4x. So I set 4x equal to what is the asymptote equation for secant? Pi halves. So I'd say pi halves plus pi n. And now to find the equation of the asymptote, I need it to be equal x equals. So therefore, I will just divide. x equals pi over 8 plus pi over 4. Yes? If the asymptote is like just by itself 0 plus pi n, do you want us to write a 0 or a just leave, Yeah, just leave it as pi n. Questions on that?